Thank God it's Friday. Let's give this coin a roll. When do you think the market's going to be on Monday? Is it going to be a bull or a bear? She threw another bear. I mean, I'm sorry, another bull. There we go. And I think that's what it did. Was it a bear yesterday? I forgot. If it was, it was wrong. That's for sure. I don't really track the coin toss here. I think there's someone out there that does. Good. There goes my coin. <laughs> Good evening. And yeah, I said evening. I know I wanted to get these morning shows done, but I had a, uh, uh, a big chore to do this morning. Uh, actually, a coin collection came in, and I know some of you have been asking me about coins and stuff. I'll show you kind of what I did this morning. Uh, meanwhile, take a look at this for our South Florida peeps. It looks like it might be a beautiful weekend. I don't see a lot of clouds in the sky right now and uh, overlooking the beach here the same way. I think it's probably in the 90s out there, but still, still beautiful. What's the temperature? Um, no, not too bad. 84 right now. Not too bad. This is from South Florida. Not too bad, but what a beautiful evening out there. Take a look at those skies and the water looks, uh, oh, it's always nice and warm this time of year. Uh, great time to just go sit up to your neck right there on a uh, sandbar uh, with whatever your favorite drink is in the evening and you can do that in the morning with coffee as well all right let me get into uh, uh, it's, this is not a, uh, a quote by any sort it's actually the uh, Boy Scout oath and I think the Scout oath uh, how many of you were uh, Scouts out there I was when I was a kid I'm not even sure the Scouts exist out there much anymore I don't hear much from them um, funny too because I used to donate a lot of coin supplies to the local scout troops I haven't seen them around for years but it's it's a wonderful thing if you think about it the scout oath is on my honor I would do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the scout law to help other people at all times to keep myself physically strong mentally awake and morally straight <clears throat> the scout laws a scout is trustworthy loyal helpful friendly courteous kind obedient cheerful thrifty clean brave clean and reverent Wow, wow. Where do they teach uh, young, young people this anymore? I mean, I know they don't teach it in schools, any of this stuff right here. Uh, so uh, it's got a whole different generation, folks. It's sure nice, it would sure be nice to see uh, organizations like the Scouts come back uh, uh, stronger than they were when I was a kid because I, it really had a big impact on me. And, and if you think about it, what does this have to do with the price of gold and silver? Well. Oh, the less helpful, the less friendly, the less courteous, the less kind, the less obedient, the less cheerful, the less thrifty, clean, brave, clean, reverent, and the less people try to do their duty to God and their country and to the people around them, and the less people uh, help other people at all times, and the less people uh, keep themselves physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight, the more this country is screwed and the more chances that you're going to need even bigger stacks of gold and silver in your pile. So, yeah, I went there. I went there. But, uh, God, I love this. I, could, I remember this one. Scouting was important to me when I was a kid. I looked forward to uh, the scout meetings every week. Uh, I was a Cub Scout, made it through uh, part of the Boy Scouts until we moved to Florida. I think uh, I was in the Boy Scouts uh, here. Uh, Boca, I'm going to tell you, in Boca Raton, I was in the Boy Scouts in Boca Raton uh, uh, and Delray Beach, but when we got to Boca Raton, I, I got to the scout group there. I think our first camping trip, our scout master got drunk and, and left Ocala, Florida with me and a bunch of other scouts, left us there. <laughs> I had to call my parents on somebody's phone to come pick us up. Uh, <clears throat> I know that's not a great scout story, but I tell you what, the, the uh, I think the day or the uh, day and a half that we, me and a bunch of other uh, what was it, probably 12-year-olds or 13, whatever we were at the time, 11. Uh, never had a better time in our lives. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we survived through it. But uh, kind of funny story. I can't talk about that. right? But I do value my scout years. And that's pretty much after that happened, my father came and picked us up. He, uh, he says, you're out of the scouts. And, uh, you know, what my dad said went. You know, what he said was the uh, rule around the house. Lived in his house. All right. This is what I did today, uh, and we're going to get to Gold and Silver Report. Man, it's kind of cool week with Gold and Silver. Uh, 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 again, thank God it's Friday. I'm curious to see what happens on Monday, but here's my deal today. I didn't get a chance to do the morning show uh, uh, this morning. I can make excuses, but uh, it was a busy morning. I had an appointment. This is like 150 plus coins that I had to uh, look at each one, grade each one. None of them are graded already. You know, I'm, I'm actually grading. I'm very good at grading. Uh, so we had to go through and grade each one. Uh, and I do, we got a new helper. Leon uh, is uh, my new coin guy. And Leon helped me with some of this as well. Otherwise, I don't think I would have got through the, uh, the entire series today. 
And again, grading it and pricing it accurately, accurately. That's what needed to be done, and that's what I got done today, and that's why I was busy and did not get the video early. <clears throat> There's my excuse. I'm sticking with it. Uh, so that's why we got the evening report. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with evening reports. I just really want to start getting them done in the morning. So now that you know what I've done all week, now that you know that I was a Boy Scout and a Cub Scout and the reason that I wasn't a Boy Scout anymore, <laughs> let's move in today's uh, prices here uh, and uh, see what we got going on. Market's closed right now, but take a look at this. You know, we broke through the 1800 level. Doesn't surprise me really. Uh, silver uh, was touching on that 20, uh, $21 level. Customer came in and said, silver went past 21. I, look, I didn't think it did, unless it was an intraday trade, but it did not. And now that I recall, I think he was looking at uh, JM Bullion's uh, uh, price of silver, which is what, 20 cents higher uh, than, hey, let's actually take a look and let's see how much higher JM Bullion jacks their uh, uh, price. JM Bullion compared to what the close is right now. Let's take a look at JM Bullion. Where are we, JM? There you are right there. JM Bullion, big company, big public company, great company. Um, they do things their own way, obviously. Let's take a look at, see, they're showing silver at $21.05. Here's what the reality is of it, folks. Give or take a few cents, because again, spot price has changed, but silver is not $21. It did not close at $21, and the silver price is closed right now. I don't know where they get their fixes from. There's the bid and ask price. I mean, we could look at Fizz Trade as well, uh, but it's going to about show about the same thing. Uh, so, uh, you know, well, there's the bid price at least 2084. Let me see. I think one of the companies out there that shows an ask price as well is uh, Fizz Trade. Let's see. Let's take a look at Fizz Trade. And where is Fizz Trade? There we are. <clears throat> it's a trading platform. Uh, but they, you know, one of the cool things down at the bottom here, you can get some free spots from them here. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, we're not at that uh, $21 mark, despite JM Bullion showing that you're sitting at $21. <clears throat> I suspect that they do that just to kind of hedge themselves by, I don't know, what are they hedging themselves there? Well, quite a bit, actually, uh, 10, 15 cents at least. Anyway, what am I showing for spots? Uh, about 15 cents. So, and even if the, the ask price is closer to 2090, they got themselves an 11 cents hedge there uh, by showing $21. But we did not hit $21 yet, folks. Uh, it, it's still sub $21, maybe at the 2088 high. Uh, and again, this is the closed market right here. So take it for what it is. Uh, I'm not quite sure how they, if they jack up the price of gold on JM as well. Let me take a look at that too. Gold 1810 is what they're showing. Let's see what the reality of gold is. Yeah, about an $8 boost there. Uh, over the price of gold from what I'm seeing and uh, gold hasn't been 1810 all day but they're showing it right now at 1810 and the market is closed uh, so 1802 we bust yeah, here I'm, not a big deal I'm just kind of wondering where uh, JM SD and uh, uh, Atmex get their spot prices I think they hedge them just a little bit uh, just to be on the safe side but uh, uh, we're over 1800 right now with uh, gold we're, all, we're uh, sitting on the high end of the 20 20 dollar side looks like we're poking through to that 21 dollar uh, and if you were to uh, follow JM, Atmex, and SD spots, we're over 21. Uh, <clears throat> all right, I'm cracking a joke. Uh, and platinum in the mid-900s right now. So uh, I'm liking where we're at. I, I still think that these uh, prices are, are really cheap. And, of course, if you ask me, I think sub-$2,000 uh, uh, gold is cheap. I think sub-25 and 30, sub-$30 silver is cheap. And sub-$1,200 uh, 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 platinum is cheap, all right? And over that price is even cheap to me. I, you know, we... I don't want to say the M word. I'm going to say it, manipulation. <laughs> the, you know, I just don't want to talk about it. We're going to get briefly into that. It looks like the JP uh, uh, trial is over with their traders, and there's been a sentence. I'll talk about that in a moment here. Uh, or was there? Uh, and uh, <clears throat> so here we are. Uh, we, we've got a close here at uh, over 18, a, a close of silver just a tad under 20, and the markets don't open until Sunday night, so this is what you got for the rest of the week. And let's take a look at the 24-hour chart to see what we got going on. And uh, this is a wine report, by the way. I'm going to take my first sip here. Mm. Cheers to all my listeners. Tonight's a Merlot. Uh, not a bad Merlot either for a um, for the price I paid. <laughs> yeah, I'm cheap like that. Uh, but uh, watch the pennies. The dollars will take care of themselves. And it is a good wine. I'm not cheap as far as taste goes. I'm just cheap when it comes to price. All right, let's uh, take a look at the uh, gold market. Uh, there's green, which would be today. You know, when the markets opened up and the Crimex markets op opened up here, uh, we just had a drift uh, upwards overall throughout the day. We didn't get like we did yesterday, that spike, as you can see. Oh, no, not yesterday. There's a, uh, the spike that we had on uh, Wednesday. 
uh, is what you see there. Boom, uh, above that 1805 mark and then back down again. It just drifted up overall uh, today in gold and uh, where we are sitting right now. I'm kind of curious what the uh, gold to silver ratio is. Let's check for ourselves here. Uh, meanwhile, before I forget, 1,802.75 divided by 20.845 equals. It's approximately 86.4835. Okay, the gold to silver ratio has just declined just a tad uh, from 87 and change to where it is right now. Uh, and that probably has something to do, again, with silver kind of moving up in value. It was in that low 20s yesterday, and gold was still in the uh, high 1700s. Uh, but again, silver plate caught up or catch up. That's kind of what I said was going to happen. When, the, when that ratio gets too wide, it tells you one thing. Gold's too cheap or silver's too cheap. And I don't think gold's too cheap at these $1,800 levels or, or high 17s. Silver just seemed really cheap at the low 20s. So... A purely a guess on my part, educated guess. I've been doing this a long time. Uh, and let's take a look at the 24-hour charts with silver. Exact same thing. Take a look at this green chart. Crimex market's open. We drift up overall, even into the aftermarkets on silver, which is kind of cool to see. Uh, but again, your range right here, you had a low of 2027 in the 24-hour in the world spot prices. New York had a low of 2037. So, I mean, it jumped up quite a bit. Whatever happened, I don't know. What news was it today that caused the price of gold and silver to go up to the short, some of the short positions step out, step aside? Uh, I'll wait to read Ted Butler's reports to find out more here. Uh, the funny thing is, though, there is a pattern that I've been noticing. The pattern, I don't like the pattern just because I just feel that stocks are going to take another crap here at some point. We are not back into a bull market with stocks, maybe a semi-temporary uh, bull, but uh, take a look at this. I have been watching this, all four of these in the green, and I'm including gold with that as well. Gold has been in the green as well, as, as well as uh, Dow Jones, S&P, and NASDAQ for the last week or so. Maybe it's been a little bit longer than a week. Uh, and uh, these four things right here have all been in the green together. When, when, when NASDAQ, S&P, and Dow Jones have been up, gold has been going up as well. Yeah. Silver, not so much. Silver does its own thing in the criminal crime X markets. But uh, gold following uh, the NASDAQ, S&P, and Jones. Uh, the Dow Jones. Now, <clears throat> is this just, I mean, take a look at the chart there. Boom, this is the uh, the day chart. Ha about the same time, too. Take a look at this in the criminal crime act markets. Now, I, you know, I got to remember that these markets open up, well, right about there, but take a look at this. Uh, uh, and it's been happening every day. Uh, if you take a look at the chart uh, for the, what is it? Uh, what am I looking at? The Dow Jones. Is that the Dow Jones chart? Uh, right there. You'll take a look at the Dow. Well, hold on. Let me see. It doesn't tell me what chart that is, and now I'm getting confused, and damn it. <laughs> All right. Don't mean to waste your time there. Uh, there it is. It is a Dow Jones chart. Okay. Uh, the, the ascent starts around the same time. The ascent, and this has been happening, I think, for the last week or so. The ascent starts about the same time that the uh, uh, gold market starts to ascend. Take a look at that, 10, 1030, and that price in that range starts to drift up where the chart, you could probably overlay it. The same thing with silver. You could overlay it with this chart somewhat if it was a similar chart, and it looks very similar. So for some reason, gold and silver are uh, uh, copying the bid and going back, you know, or going up in conjunction with the NASDAQ, SP, and the Dow Jones, all right? So make sense of that. Not quite sure what that means. Does that mean that when we see these markets get trashed right here, we're going to get trashed in gold and silver? I don't know. Uh, it, you know, sometimes things just correlate with each other uh, for no other reason than well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, too big to wrap my head around right now. But uh, if you got some thoughts on that, uh, make them in the comment section below, and I'll get to them. Uh, what's happened with the uh, J.P. Morgan spoofers out there? Well, they were convicted of fraud, but they were acquitted of racketeering. Now, a lot of people are going to cheer that they were found guilty on uh, 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 futures manipulation. Uh, to, oh, hold on. Uh, acquitted on racketeering. Here's the thing, though, is that they were acquitted on racketeering and conspiracy charges. And, folks, I tell you, that's the big charge that really <clears throat> needed to take down the criminal crime X uh, markets and J.P. Morgan because, you know, right now the charges are fraud and manipulation or something like that. Uh, what is it? I forget what the exact charge is. But they dropped the racketeering and conspiracy charges. And what that does, it really does, I believe, let J.P. Morgan off the hook. Uh, for some potential criminal charges and more fines. Uh, by, by dropping the uh, or quitting these guys in racketeering conspiracy, 
in this particular, they're traitors, J.P. Morgan traitors, by acquitting them of racketeering conspiracy, it basically, I think it lets J.P. Morgan off the hook and legally in so many different ways. Also lets the CME group off the hook because now the CME group doesn't have to explain why they allowed uh, J.P. Uh, criminal uh, uh, bullion traders to continue to trade in their markets and still trade today. You know, now if you go to J.P. Morgan or if you go to CME group and say, well, listen, if they would even answer you, why are you allowing J.P. Morgan to trade metals when they've, when they've been caught spoofing and uh, manipulating metals so much? Well, you know what they're going to say now. CME Group's going to say, well, J.P. Morgan was never convicted in that trial, you know, this particular trial, of any kind of conspiracy or racketeering. It was the three traders who greedily, independently, they're going to throw the traders under the bus. And that's probably what they've done because racketeering conspiracy holds bigger charges as well. I'm sure J.P. Morgan helped out these traders, maybe put money towards their defense fund, because if they didn't, if these traders went down for racketeering conspiracy, guess who goes down next? J.P. Morgan, guess who goes down next? CME Group, because CME Group could be seen uh, legally, in, and especially in civil courts, all right? It could be seen that CME Group allowed this behavior to continue. And actually, I still believe that it could be a good lawsuit against the CME Group for this, because. You know, the CME Group has allowed this manipulative behavior to happen by a company, J.P. Morgan, who has been fined, their traders have been convicted. You know, and why would you allow someone in your casino that's been convicted of cheating over and over? You wouldn't unless you're complicit in making money off them. I said it. I said it. There you go. Take it for what it is uh, and uh, feel free to share that <laughs> opinion as well. But that's the truth of the matter. They are complicit, folks. Uh, anyways, J.P. Uh, uh, Morgan traders thrown under the bus, uh, charged with fraud, but no racketeering and conspiracy charges, which would have thrown their bosses under the bus and perhaps the whole rotten fucking market. There's your F word for the weekend. I'm going to keep it to that pretty much. You watch. <laughs> best deals out there, folks, is uh, uh, the best deal at concierge bullion services and commercial rare coins is really uh, in smaller increments going to be kilo bars. I still have a great source for them. Uh, but I want to talk about some things that are becoming short out there. What's becoming short out there? One ounce bars, one ounce generics, whether it's from Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion, who I will beat their prices, and other people out there, especially the locals down here. Nothing wrong with the locals, Atmex, JM, or SD. Uh, I'm just very competitive, and uh, baby needs new shoes. <laughs> so, <laughs> baby always needs new shoes. Uh, so uh, um, I'm very competitive against those guys. But... You know, JP, who, uh, J, uh, JP, uh, JM Bullion, uh, the big online seller, the 800 pound gorilla out there. And again, good company, nothing wrong with them. Uh, I can beat their prices. And again, I'm being, just being competitive. Uh, but they, they own uh, uh, part, uh, part minting right, or they, they own part of uh, Silvertown. They own part of uh, Sunshine Mint, I believe, their partnerships in, with those two groups. So JM out of SD and Atmex is always going to have uh, better source of metal, I think, when it comes to generic one ounce rounds and 10 ounce rounds and other stuff, because again, they're part owner in those two companies who are big generic makers, all right, Silvertown. And uh, uh, so what I'm saying is I'm even looking at JM site and their price for one ounce is one ounce of uh, 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 rounds and their price for uh, 10 ounce bars. Uh, the premium is just freaking crazy. You know, I'm going to go back to that big deal from the Texas billionaire. Now, if this is all kind of played out and what Andy Sheckman says comes to fruition, that they are buying more silver, chances are they are in the process of buying it right now. Hence the reason maybe premiums on silver eagles and 90% are still up. Also, uh, but even if they're not buying silver eagles in 90%, which I would think that uh, 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 in this new order that they would fill, they wouldn't buy, they wouldn't go after high premium stuff. They would save their client millions of dollars by going after the generic stuff. And maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe that's why generic one ounces are so high right now. Maybe that's why generic tens are so high. Maybe that's why, and not really the kilos, but this American buyer seems fond of American uh, product and American increments. Maybe <laughs> kilos, it just doesn't figure in with what they want to do. Uh, and that's why I can get a great deal on them. And that's why there actually is probably still good deals on kilos out there, but I can still beat their prices. Uh, but I believe that, the, uh, uh, that there's some big buying going on for one ounce generics. There's some big buying going on. Now, whether it's this billionaire or not, uh, there is a shortage out there. And that's what's causing these high premiums in one ounce generics, which is what's causing the premiums in the high premiums in 10 ounce generics. Uh, and that's what's causing the, you know, 100 ounces 
bars, even in generic form, were typically always the cheapest way to buy it, cheaper than uh, kilos, but not anymore. Uh, even 100 ounce bars are a quarter more, you know, kind of, you know, just to kind of give you a rough number, a quarter more an ounce than kilo bars, okay? So uh, hundreds are cheaper or, or more expensive than kilos. So it tells me that someone's out there buying the hell out of hundreds, ones, and tens. And we already know someone bought the hell out of and maybe, maybe still might be buying more eagles and 90%. Uh, meanwhile, kilos are absolutely the best deal out there. And there's other good deals. If you, if you come into our store, Commercial Wear Coins and Precious Metals between 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays, I'll tell you, gosh, I should show you these pictures. I'll, t I'll tell you uh, what the uh, best deals are uh, uh, out there. And we, we've got some pretty cool deals for you smaller guys out there, Will, that aren't, you know, you're, that are buying a couple ounces or 10 or 50 or 20. Again, at our store in Commercial Wear Coins, our brick and mortar, uh, if you're buying over 100 ounces of gold and over 2,500 ounces of silver, uh, we can uh, accommodate you, even if you don't live in our state and don't live in this immediate area, uh, with concierge bullion services. Uh, what's the best deal out there in gold bars? Uh, well, uh, just what I said, but here's another interesting thing, folks. Uh, gold bars seem slightly delayed out there. The, uh, uh, now, that may just be a regional and a couple of the uh, vendors that I deal with may be a little short on... Uh, uh, gold bars, you know, the generic Balcombies and the Swiss bars and that kind of thing. Uh, perhaps maybe there's just a little delay going on, uh, but there is a delay. Uh, <clears throat> but again, I can't, I can't say it's across the country or anything like that. Uh, but bars still seem to be the best deal out there. I think at spot plus 80 or less. And uh, after that, the next thing would be the occasional deals you can find on Austrian uh, Philharmonics and Krugerrands maybe maples, eagles, and buffaloes are still up in that 160 range, a little on the high side. I'd stay away from those, stick with the bars if you can. And again, you know, our store here in South Florida, our brick and mortar, 10 to four Mondays through Fridays, you can walk in and buy any of this stuff and we'll beat the locals down here and the online guys. As far as uh, you don't live in our area here in South Florida, you can't visit our brick and mortar again, please uh, visit Concierge Bullion Services. You can give us a call anytime and we can work with you on the phone. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, yesterday's video, which was $25 or $250 silver price this year. Um, and I was kind of alluding to the fact that we're sitting in that $20 move right now, and we're probably moving up to the next level 25. Will they cap it at 25? Will the big commercial shorts cap silver at 25 again? Will they cap it earlier? I kind of don't think so. Will they cap it at 25? Will they let it run higher? Are they done uh, shorting it? Are they going to let it ride up to the high side? You know, and where is that high side uh, stop? Is it 250? Is it 50? Is it uh, 350? I don't know. I heard numbers everywhere from there, 25 to in between. I just don't see us going much below the sub $20 level unless the economy completely falls apart. And again, remember I was telling you, know, I was taking, remember, um, I can re remember to say remember instead of member. <laughs> that's, that's my nine year old member in me. Uh, remember to, uh, 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 that I was showing the, the parallel between the uh, Dow Jones and market. If this just fell off a cliff, I wonder if it would take gold, silver uh, with it. It probably would not every other thing because it did in 2008. But you know, the one thing that I believe that the uh, federal government has been good at doing behind the scenes and the Federal Reserve has been doing behind the scenes is secretly manipulating the Dow Jones, SP, NASDAQ. Not manipulating it upward, but manipulating it from a complete overnight failure by propping up these markets. We know they do it already. Uh, but again, if these markets just took an overnight shit, would it take the gold price of gold and silver with it? Uh, very possible it could. But meanwhile, I think we're moving up to the next leg. Uh, I wonder when this little uh, uh, trend that we're seeing where gold is following the Dow Jones, SP, and NASDAQ like it has been for a week or two or a couple weeks, uh, I wonder when that trend will end. You know, when, when the Dow Jones starts to go down, is gold and silver going to continue to go up? Or uh, uh, kind of an interesting thing to watch. These trends usually... I wouldn't even call them trends. They're just kind of little, certain, you know, similarities, things that happen, maybe coincidences even. Uh, but no less, it's something I've spotted here the last couple of weeks. We, we already know about this, a bunch of nonsense that is. The reason they should have been charged with uh, fraud or, or racketeering and conspiracy it would have taken down the big boys, but they were not, folks. There's one thing you can be assured of is uh, uh, the system is rigged, the system is crooked, but if you don't play, you can't win. That was last night's video. Uh, 25 to, to, to $250. I'm going to go over last night's, since it's a Friday video, oh, I'm going to do my second sip here, by the way. My throat's getting dry. Hmm. 
Okay. Let's see here. Uh, Stephen W. says, Brian spent the morning listening to Jeffrey Christian, the CPM group. You know what? Here, I'm not even going to go any further. Uh, propaganda on YouTube. Pure scam. Uh, absolutely. That's all there. A bunch of nonsense. Uh, CPM group is uh, full of crap here. Uh, thank you, Colin Spiller. I appreciate that. Ab B. says, Brain, brain, pinky in the brain. <laughs> that's my relaxing moment. Oh, that's a, isn't that like a, a cartoon or something like that on one of the channels? Uh, brain in the pain. Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm a little bit older than that. I should know that stuff. Uh, well, I shouldn't know that stuff. Uh, I'm middle age, man. That's uh, the, gener the generation right before me, I think. Welco says, got a little smackdown right as you posted. Yes, it did. Uh, Kevin Costner's Waterworld. Mel, get Mad Max. Yeah, that's what I was trying. Thanks, Welco Service. Mad Max. And Mel Gibson, I was trying to think about, you know, people that are thinking that they're going to take their 90% silver coin and their silver eagles and be trading it for gasoline and bread. You know, they, they, they've they been watching too many Mad Max movies and too many Waterworld movies, all right? <laughs> Thanks for, that's what I was trying to talk about. People, you know, it, it, and really, I, I think, it, you know, there, there's a certain segment of the pop. You know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a shooter when it comes, you know, I love firearms. I'm a shooter. I own firearms. But I have not purchased... Well, actually, I do have a lot of ammo, but uh, just because I've accumulated over time, I haven't shot it. But I'm not really thinking that I need, uh, uh, you know, 20,000 rounds of ammo uh, and uh, 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 600 days of food or anything like that. Because if you get into that scenario, you know, your, your best bet is just to get, o get out of wherever you're at because that's really a shitty place to be uh, and find yourself, a, 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 you know, it's best to have the least amount of possessions that you can. I think that's gold, silver, and enough ammo to get you out of town, enough food to get you out of town. Again, enough food, enough ammo, and enough uh, 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 to get you out of town, and enough gold and silver to survive wherever you end up. How's that sound, all right? That's my opinion of the whole thing. Uh, you, you can't carry 20,000 rounds of ammo with you and get across the state border that quick, but you can't carry $20,000 worth of gold with you. Um, shit and your shoes <laughs> and get out of town quick. Uh, why are Austrian Coronas so cheap? Damn it, Clayton, that's a, oh, ludicrous. Uh, what did I say that had something to do with ludicrous? I, that's a rapper, isn't it? Thanks, Joey. Uh, why are Austrian 100 Coronas so cheap? Uh, you know, I forgot to talk about those. I haven't looked, guys. By the way, if you can buy Austrian uh, 100 Coronas, they are a great way to buy gold. They're 0 0.9802 ounces. They're just shy of an ounce, but still, if the premium's cheap, why the hell not? I like Austrian Coronas. Why are those cheap? Because they're not popular and they're not a one ounce increment, and people just can't wrap their mind around doing math. Uh, that's why, Clayton, but they are a good deal. I'd buy them when you can find them if they're priced right. What's up, Roger? How's your grandkids doing? And uh, Proof Silver Eagles, you bought them when they were 56. They're currently worth around $82 wholesale on the high right now. I just sold all mine for 82 bucks. Uh, on Proof Silver Eagles, and uh, I feel good with that. Could they go higher? Maybe. Uh, what's going on, Roger? And thanks for commenting here. Oh, man, I'm getting tired. Ah, another sip. My throat's getting sore. Long day. I've been talking all day, doing appraising all day. What did I appraise? Really cool coin collection, in case you didn't catch the beginning of the show. <laughs> Where's my cool coin collection? There it is right there. See it up in the corner? Ah, uh, really cool, a cool collection. And, uh, I got to thank the uh, person that brought it in. It's exciting to see nice stuff like that. And there's a lot of other cool stuff we see here all the time. I don't talk about coin collecting much. I, you know, we, a big part of our business here is rare coins and paper money. Uh, I probably should talk about more, that more. And I'm one of the few guys out there that can actually grade the stuff uh, for real. <laughs> Bob says the real question is 5 or $15. Bob, I don't think so. Not in a long shot. I'd be surprised. The only way I think we could see $15 silver is if uh, the, if the entire market collapsed like it did in 2008. And $15 would be just on paper. You would never buy real silver at $15. In fact, I'd venture to say that you'd be seeing a $10 and $15 premium at that point. So I highly doubt it. But again, never underestimate the crooks and Cromex. But if it did get that low by some kind of across the board uh, market crash, uh, you, you're just never going to buy real stuff at that price. Maybe the paper, but not the real stuff, Bob. Uh, I think you should add 250 option for silver as well. Interesting. I forget what that comment applies to, uh, but thanks for watching. Even my parents hate me. I love that name. <laughs> and why? And why? Why would they? You seem like such a nice person. Such intelligent comments. You know, you're watching my videos. You must be super intelligent. So why would your 
parents hate you. All right, I know it's just a joke. I, uh, I'm a little bit corny at times. Temporary, too big to jail, too big to fail, absolutely. Uh, temporary says, what would happen to gold price if 600,000 tons was just introduced to our inventory? Please answer. Didn't do the math, temporary, I can't tell you that. 600,000 tons, if you do the math, you let me know, I can tell you. Uh, physical gold or derivatives in paper? Uh, <laughs> so, and are you talking about that Nigerian or that African so-called gold that's supposed to be when they just announced that there's so many, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know what the impact that has. Um, sure, bring it on, man, back up the truck. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Temporary. Hope you have a great weekend. Option three, pathetic prepper. Oh, man. Uh, oh, option three from yesterday's video and the, uh, uh, the different options I had. I'm going to have to go back and look, but thanks, Pathetic Proper. I appreciate that. You were definitely watching. Uh, one of the smart guys out there. Bullion Bros says, as long as we're owned by the Fed, JPM, silver will never see the true price. Poor man's gold for a reason. Uh, I think so, but, you know, at, at some point, listen, they manipulate. There's a lot of parallels with the uh, nickel uh, trade that happened where it almost defaulted the LME. Uh, they canceled out the trade. They lost the credibility. The CME group, if there's one thing they are, they're self-preservationists. Same thing with JP. And they are not going to do anything that completely wipes them off the map. That includes having someone else or themselves being in a position short that can completely bankrupt their asses. So perhaps we're getting to the point where there might be some sense coming into these uh, greedy bastards, all right? Just my opinion. Uh, and thanks for commenting, William Bros. Great name, by the way. Gary Wright says, hey, fish guy. I know it's a compliment. Man, what, uh, I couldn't take it any other way. Uh, I would love to be, I'd love to talk about fishing, have this show about fishing. Fishing, precious metals, rare coins, mm, what else? Uh, all right, <laughs> I could go on. <laughs> um, since we moved from our super big safe and buried at Oak Island, I, I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, it, you know, if you bury your gold and silver at Oak Island, it will never be found. <laughs> Absolutely. I. <th> <laughs> Uh, nothing will ever be found at Oak Island. Now, that's pretty funny, Gary. Have a nice weekend. Silver Liner says there's only three women that are billionaire in Texas. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation that's the Walton woman that bought that $50 million in gold and silver. Uh, and uh, if she's buying again another $50 million, that's maybe where the uh, uh, generic ones, tens, the American-made generic ones, tens, and other items are going. Uh, thousand ounce bars are also up in premium. Maybe uh, someone heard me and Maybe the people that are filling this order heard me and say, you know what, let's do the right, th not the right, let's fill this lady's order with mostly 1,000 ounce bars at this point. She's got enough small generic stuff at overpriced levels, and I didn't say that, but I did. Um, uh, cannibal, I think you meant cannibalism, Tony, uh, and 50 days food shortage go flat. Well, you know, I got a neighbor that's on the little bit hefty side that will probably start looking at me like a... Uh, a chicken wing <laughs> after 15 days. All right, I'm just joking. I know you folks out there that are on the little heavier side than me wouldn't be not, well, maybe I would look like a chicken wing to you after 15 days. <laughs> Thanks, Tony, I appreciate that. Uh, maybe you'd be looking like a nice ham to me, so who knows what happens to people when they're hungry after. Well, hold on, they got that TV show. What is it, uh, Naked and Afraid? Uh, all right, so if I got my house, my internet, and my clothing, I can make it 15 days without food. If, if these, if these uh, numb nuts on TV can make it in the wilderness with no clothes and nothing for longer than 15 days, and I can do it, so can you, Tony. Farmers out there, as they would take silver over cash even now, sure, I'll take silver over cash. You make me that offer. Um, <clears throat> barter, hit and miss like a better barter. Yeah, I talked to you, that shows about barter, and it was, you know, uh, if you didn't watch it, I think uh, you should watch it because as I said, a lot of people are, are paying too much money for 90% dimes and constitutional silver because they believe that in a Mad Max type of world and the Kevin Costner uh, uh, postman world and the water world type scenario, that gold and silver is the only thing you can trade for food because the fiat currency will be worthless. I will destroy that premise. It's not true. Well, in a Kevin Costner type world, but that ain't happening, folks. That ain't happening. You know, even in the worst part of Germany in the hyperinflationary days, they were still using uh, uh, marks to buy bread. Uh, but the smart people had hedged their marks with gold, if you can wrap your brain around that, guys. Uh, this year, 22 max. You know, I don't think so, Roy. I do think we're going we're gonna to head into that $25 plus territory here by the end of the year. Tough to say, though, again, never underestimate these uh, crooked bastards 
in, in the COMEX markets. 1250 back up the truck, dude, because you are never buying real silver at 1250 Maybe that Chinese stuff you will, but not the real on Al, Alibaba, the uh, Chinese uh, Silver uh, Eagles. That's what it tells us, <laughs> more or less. Uh, you probably right. get those uh, for 1250 now. Or too, less. Gold and silver. I mean, oh, gosh, sorry, I didn't mean to turn that video on you. And, uh, oh my gosh, I just uh, I screwed up the order of my comments. And there we go. God, there's another guy up there saying something here. 25 bucks. And, uh, oh my gosh, we got a lot more comments than I thought we did. Oh, there we go. Uh, oh gosh, there we go. 1250. I don't think so. Alexander says, I started to collect 70s motorcycles. Alexander, let me. That's interesting. Uh, uh, what do you think about 80s motorcycles, early 80s motorcycles? Is it a little bit too soon to start collecting them, but you can probably get them with the really low mileage. But uh, I like that. I'm a car collector myself to some degree. Um, I'm involved with an automotive collision shop and body shop, and I'm. I'm rebuilding a, uh, uh, a 1981 Trans Am, gonna put an LS1 motor in it, or an LS motor of some sort in it. Uh, but no less, I like uh, cars and automobiles and guns and all that cool stuff. Um, you don't MOT or road tax. Good, uh, good information there. I'm gonna take a look at 70s motorcycles. Thanks for commenting, Alexander. Here's how I feel about your, you got an extra one, you wanna trade me for some gold and silver? Give me a call, Alexander, if you got a good deal. Uh, <clears throat> if you got, happen to have two and you only want one. <laughs> Uh, here's how I feel about Ted. If he wasn't shorting with him, then he's a fool. He should be managing a football fund where he knows him. Um, you know, Ted Butler, if you're talking about Ted Butler, he is no fool, sir, by any shape uh, or, or form. Uh, you said if he's not shorting with him, I am sure Ted Butler is making a fortune. Uh, he's not making a fortune off his newsletter, which I think is reasonably priced, and how many people can he have subscribing to it. But Ted Butler is a seasoned trader since the 1970s. The guy can read CO2 reports. And I bet you, I bet you this man is trading these markets on the up and down side because, of course, as I said, if, and nobody knows how the game is rigged in silver better anywhere than Ted Butler. And if you know how the game is rigged, you can certainly win, and you should. And I'm sure Mr. Butler is winning at that game. but. He, you know, I, I don't think he's going to trade or, or sell his trading strategy for $34 a month like he does his newsletter. So uh, I'd pay certainly for his trading strategy and I'd probably follow it. And I do know he does trade uh, and he's on the upside of that trade. Again, like you said, of course the game is rigged, but if you don't play, you can't win. And how do you win? By knowing how the game is rigged. Thanks for commenting. You know who. Joe McDonald says that was great. Thanks for my minute of fame. You're welcome, Joe. Have a great weekend. Living the dream is saying $2.50 silver. <laughs> you are living the dream, sir, because uh, you're dreaming if you think silver will ever be $2.50. I think you meant 25 but no less. Have yourself a wonderful weekend. Um, couldn't have managed money. Uh, quit putting in buy orders based on non-fulfilled orders, which would stop the manipulation. Another time for a sip. Uh, let me see here. Hmm. By the way, a Merlot cheers to all my friends Friday night. Hope you have a great weekend. Um, non-fulfilled or to stop the manipulation. That's a very good question, Invisible Stacker. And you know what? Um, if I remember, I'll try to uh, uh, send Ted Butler an email and ask him that question uh, and uh, answer that for you. I can't quite wrap my mind around it uh, right now. Maybe I could in the morning. Uh, again, thanks for uh, uh, asking that question. Can't promise I'll get it back to you on it, but cool question. And if you've got any answer to that, let me know in the comment section uh, in the uh, next video. Uh, will gold and silver drop a bit this fall? Yes. Will it go up? Yes. <laughs> And, and the question people, uh, they always say me, uh, is gold gonna go up? I always say yes. And if they ask me, will gold go down? I'll say yes. So yeah, it's gonna go up and down. Uh, all this year, you know, the overall trend is upward. It, when you look at it in a fiat driven world, the overall trend is upward, okay? Watch my cursor here. You see, let's pretend this is 5,000 years ago. Well, let's not even pretend. Let's pretend this is just 1913 when the Fed was created, this right here on uh, uh, AZPH's uh, uh, thanks right here. And here's my graph, ready? Uh, since today, this is what gold and silver has done uh, since that period. You see that? Up and down, up and down. And we live in small slices of that, look, my cursor. We live in small slices of that uh, uh, right there. And we see a lot of this in our lifetime. And really, but if you look at it, the overall trend in a fiat currency is always gonna be upward. Uh, but I can't tell in the short term, I, I, you, you know, the manipulation and the stuff that goes on in these markets, plus uh, macroeconomic news, microeconomic news, whatever the hell you want to call it, 
uh, uh, interest rates, uh, all kinds of crap play into this. The short term, it's just tough for me to tell. But I know you will not go wrong on a medium to long term basis. I just know it. Uh, Michael Matthews, cheers to you on your coffee. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's coffee video. Uh, thank you, Strongman Gold and Silver. Uh, William, we don't question authority, but we always question the motive and what is backing it. It's just not otherwise if we try to be behind it. You always have to question authority. Well, I'm saying in general, you're, oh, I got what you're saying. You're saying we don't, as a society, question authority. Yeah. Yeah, no more private bills passed behind our backs. Uh, William, I feel you, man. I, I really do. Uh, I, I know exactly what you're saying, and I can feel your angst there, brother. Uh, peace to you as well. Uh, Brian, uh, one junkie. Uh, all right, Rainbird says, uh, uh, one junkie silver and silver eagles are going into hiding. Gresham's Law 101 happening slowly. Thank you, Rainbird. I appreciate that as well, and I agree with you. Wallace says the effects of the new world order is intensifying. <sighs> wow. You know what? If you had asked me if years ago about the NWO, I would say no. But when you think about the WEF and these people here that are trying to shape uh, uh, the sources of the world, and they're trying to shape you know, national policy and regional policies with their money and their ideologies. Yeah, yeah, I get it now. Tree Climber says, <laughs> shh, shh, shh. Uh, Mode Toy Con says, $250, you can get high in your own supply. You know, there are people out there that believe that it's 250 Now, I didn't say that in my video. And if you watch my videos, uh, you'll know that I didn't say 250 really, nor 25 I'm just giving the possibilities and different things we hear out there and what could be a possible scenario. You know, is, is 250 impossible? No, it's not impossible. Is 25 impossible? Certainly not. Uh, but uh, no less, uh, uh, there are people out there that really, they get too excited about 250, too excited about $50 silver, too excited about, they forget that the reason that you buy gold and silver is about wealth preservation, not about doubling up, tripling up. But you know what, doubling up and tripling up is definitely in the cards, definitely in play, and definitely possible in gold and silver and platinum markets, all right? It is. Uh, but meanwhile, don't look at it that way. You've got to look at gold and silver as wealth preservation. Everything above that, the doubles and the triples, are icing on the cake. And you better learn how to play those doubles and triples if they happen too. Because if it pulls back, you know, good time to sell off the high, buy back when it's a little bit lower. But I'm not, a, I'm not getting, it's tough for me to even do that. So I'm not even going to tell you guys to try to become day traders or, or seasonal traders on this thing. Uh, Tom says 25 bucks. Thank you for your opinion there, Tom. I think we're going to see 25 bucks this year. That's my personal opinion. But they could cap it before them. I'd like to see it sell well be on that, and so would you, I'm sure, Tom. Have a great weekend, sir. Chris says, went to my local supply shop. One says you can't keep gold and silver in stock. Yeah, Chris, that's becoming a problem. I mean, I'm paying up for it myself. You know, the premiums are getting higher and higher. Customers want it. I've got to keep it on hand. Uh, but I always keep a certain amount of silver on hand regardless. So. Uh, but the premiums are getting crazy. Celeste says you're not wrong about digital currency. Uh, the, the, you know, the uh, 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 central bank digital currencies that they're proposing and the digital stuff they're proposing, folks, is just pure freaking evil. It's just evil, bad. It's the end of privacy. It's the end of money as you know it. It's the end of you being a free person versus a slave to the state. You should reject. You should burn, I don't know if you can burn digital currencies, you should reject them in every order. You, when, when they start talking about them, call your congressman, senator, and say, I don't want them, don't deal them. If they start putting out digital central bank currencies, refuse to take them. I know I will refuse to take central bank digital currencies if they roll them out. I'll refuse to take them. It ain't money, folks. It is a sham. Uh, thanks for watching, Celeste. I appreciate that. You almost got me going there. almost had another F word in the show. <laughs> Four sip, four sip, four sip here. Hmm. That's a very light and easy Merlot. Um, uh, thanks, KDAEGB channel. Appreciate that. Um, and I uh, hope you have a great weekend as well. Dario Perez says, let's talk about numismatics. I made, I did talk about numismatics. You got me, Dario. You got me. Remember that uh, uh, video game that had the cowboy in it? You'd, you'd shoot him on a fast draw and you go, you got me. <laughs> you got me, sir. There's the coin deal of the day. Listen, how many people out there can grade uh, coins, for real, that aren't professional graders? I can grade almost any coin, not just commandments, and assign prices to them, and buy nice big deals like this and pay very fair competitive prices. Eh, experienced people like myself can. I know I'm patting myself on the back, but there you go, Dario. There's our rare coin stuff for the day. Numismatics, man. If you're ever in my area, come by. FL Panhandle says, I would think 15 is more likely during tightening all assets changes. 
uh, will fall. 2023 will get even lower until the Fed turns the money. Speaking back on, it's going to fall. Uh, interesting Florida Panhandle, but I don't agree. I really don't. I don't think we'll see 15, 16. But my gosh, you know, I didn't think we were going to even see a sub 20 for uh, a while there. And they did touch it, that sub 20, for a short period of time recently. So you just never, in crooked markets, you just don't know. You know, when the crooks and the scumbags are running the show, you just don't know. Sorry about that. That's the love of my life calling me here, probably saying uh, if I want something to eat. And uh, let me message her. Excuse me right here. Can I call you later? That's a nice thing my iPhone. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Florida Panhandle. Have a wonderful weekend. Fishing is great up in your area. I'd love to come up there fishing sometime. Uh, Marky456 says, genuine question. I wanted to stick to advice about dealing with your local dealer. I'm in Wisconsin with college expenses coming up. I'm looking to liquidate a few 2021 buffaloes, but my local dealer, even surround towns, are only offering 30 bucks under spot. I'm confused because I bought think mm, get spot back as bare minimum. You know what, Mark? I'm going to tell you what you should get from your local dealer. Now, you're going to get silence here because I'm going to sprint into the other room and grab my sheet. Now, who does this on a video? Ready? Silence for about five seconds. One, two. No, it was right here. I didn't have to give you five seconds to silence. Ah. Hmm. Buffaloes. If you lived in my area here and you were walking with just a few buffaloes and you weren't a regular customer and I didn't know you really needed the money for college expenses uh, and we're pay fair prices, I would be at spot plus unless I needed them. If I needed gold buffaloes right now, which I don't, I'm kind of stocked up a little bit on them, um, I would pay as much as uh, 65 to 100 bucks over spot for them. And I know that's a wide range. If I don't need them, I'm pro if I don't need them, I'm loading up on them and I've got to resell them to another wholesaler, I'd be a buyer at spot plus 20 bucks, okay? So I do think you're right. 30 bucks under is kind of cheap. I think what you need to do is go find yourself a good local guy that's going to pay you spot plus. Again, go Buffaloes. You should get at least spot plus 20 on those, Marky. And if you find a dealer that needed them, he'd even pay you more for them. Tough to say what your local guys are doing, you know. And again, I don't want to diss local guys. You know, there's a lot of local coin shops out there. I talked about this in the video on the night before. You know, Brian reacts to YouTube videos about one of the YouTube guys out there that calls different shops, you know, and you know, and sees what they're paying on stuff. And some shops don't pay a lot of uh, money on stuff. And the truth is, it doesn't make them bad. Their profit margin is much higher. And you shouldn't deal with them. You should price shop around. But, you know, the, the, the idea that they're like evil and bad because he's offering you 30 bucks under. Listen, 30 bucks under, he's still, even on a good day, he's going to make uh, what? Give me one second. Um, 65 cents. He'll make $100 you know at buying at 30 bucks under if he has no other buyers for him and he has to lay him off wholesale he'll make 100 bucks that's not terrible on a 1700 dollar deal for a small shop but you know you know you want to find people that are doing a little bit more volume maybe more you know some of these local coin stores don't really do bullion they do it as a side business but we you know we're like a full on rare coin and bullion business okay so uh, we do it here and that's why the price difference but I don't want to throw guys under the bus that are making a hundred bucks on a wholesale level uh, again be competitive go out there and shop you should be getting spot plus 20 if you can find the right guy for him Jack Bauer says silver is going to be maybe 25 cents I think you made a typer Jack you either made a typo or you're not too smart and you know what you watch my video I'm assuming you made a typo uh, uh, because just the fact that you clicked on my videos makes you a smart person so I think Jack accidentally put a quarter in instead of twenty five dollars all right Jack giving you the benefit of the doubt there <laughs> all right let's go uh, 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 my quote of the week and my quote of the year has been think for yourself question authority most of all question what you believe is true uh, who, who, where did you get that information from that you have in your head, your opinion? Where did you get that narrative from? Was it from your teacher, from your news, from your school? Most likely, I'd check on that first before you question anyone yourself. Anyone beside, you know, others. Before you question others, question what you think to know, what you believe to be the truth is. And if you find information and data that supports that, then, you know, you're probably right. Uh, therefore, it makes it much easier to question others. <laughs> Boy, that made that long and convoluted. Think for yourself, question authority. And uh, that's it, folks. This is, uh, hey, I'm going to do one more sip to all my friends out there. It's Friday night. What the hell? Mm. There we go. Uh, that glass is getting knocked down by attrition, that's for sure. Uh, one sip at a time. <laughs>
Hey, thanks for watching. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial, uh, Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals, which is right here, which is our brick and mortar store in Lauderdale by the Sea. We're open 10 to 4 Mondays through Fridays. We deal in any quantity of silver and gold, from fractional ounces to, you know, thousand ounce bars of silver and kilos of gold bars, all right? And we're a local business. You can walk in and deal with us anytime. We'll beat the South Florida guys. We'll also beat the uh, Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion on their popular products. And if you don't live in South Florida and you're buying over 100 ounces of gold and over 2,500 ounces of silver, I have concierge bullion services, which you can call us anytime at, uh, oh gosh, I should have my own number memorized, 954-302-2046. Or you can fill out the form here. Uh, and uh, ask us some questions or whatever and we'll get back to you. Put your name and phone number if you want here and I'll get back to you. Again, uh, Concierge Bullion Services, we do uh, uh, sales over the phone pretty much uh, for more than 100 ounces of gold and more than 2,500 ounces of silver uh, and larger actually. So uh, big deals out there. You want someone that can take care of you, give you great prices, I'm your man. I'm your Huckleberry. <laughs> Have yourself a great weekend, folks, all of you. I really appreciate you watching, and uh, I will talk to you on Monday. Good night now.